Welcome back to Love with a Classic and today we're going to have another look at the brakes on my 1975 XJ6. In a previous video I rebuilt the master cylinder because I was leaking and that seems to be working now. I bled the brakes and I do have a firm pedal so it seems to be working fine. And there are no leaks in the system now which is really great. I've also done a visual inspection before when I had a look at the front suspension so I made sure that I mean the caliper looks pretty good. There's uh, good meat left on the pads there at least in the front, and also the brake hoses look fine. I've also looked at the brake hose in the back, and that one looks a little older, but it still seems fine, so I'm going to change that out in the future, but not right now. Also, when I bled the brakes, I flushed out all the old brake fluid, so there's new fluid in the system, and everything is clean and nice. However, when I drove the vehicle before I um, took it apart, I mean, I just drove it around my property a little bit, just make sure it went into all the gears, and that the gearbox was fine and that steering everything felt fine before I started to tear the car apart. I noticed that the brakes were squealing terribly when you slow down at slow speed like when you were creeping around. So I want to fix that today as, as well. So we're going to clean out everything and put a little bit of grease on certain areas to eliminate any squealing and also just have a look at everything and make sure everything is safe and good to go back on the road. So let's take the car up in the air have a look at the front brakes and also the rear brakes after that. So here's the front right caliper. The brake pads look fine. There's a lot of meat left on them. But they're squealing pretty badly when you brake. So I want to take everything off and clean it. It's pretty easy to take these brake pads out. There are two little clips here. You pull those out. They usually come out really easily. And then you have the two pins here that push out inward. But usually you can just push them out pretty easily. There we go. Now both of those are out. This is what they look like. These are in not that bad shape. They're pretty dirty, so I am going to clean them up a bit. Because it is a surface that the brake pads do slide against in here. So, I mean, if those were really gummed up, that could, you know, cause your brakes to bind. Could also cause a little bit of squealing, but these are pretty clean. I mean, if I were to restore the brakes, put new discs on, and new pads, which I'm not doing right now, I'd probably replace these because they're pretty cheap. But for now, I'm going to clean them up. Now we're going to see if we can get the pads out. I'm going to push the pistons in a little bit, and that's really easy to do on these. There's a little lip here, so you can just get a set of these kind of adjustable pliers and there we go and of course before I did this I checked that there is room in my uh, brake reservoir so I'm not going to make anything overflow and spill so I already checked that that should be enough And there's one brake pad. Let's see if I can show. It doesn't look bad at all. I mean, it's, of course it's used, but there's a lot of miles left on that. Take out the other one. And here's the other brake pad. That one looks pretty fine as well. There's a lot of meat left on that, so that can last for a lot of miles and no real odd marks or anything on it. However, I found the same as on the other one. If you look here on the back, you see these little rusty indentations here, and that it's kind of a little rusty here and worn down. That might be where it's squealing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up this area on both of the pads, and also I'm gonna make sure not to mix them up. So I'm gonna put this pad back here and the other one over there. Since that's where they've worn into the disc, I don't want to mess that up. I'm going to clean that up. I'm also going to clean up the area in here. It's not very dirty at all, actually, but just take a small little wire brush and clean it on there. I think I'll do that right now. So I'm just simply cleaning off the edges here with the wire brush, getting off anything that's loose and dirty. I'm just going to just clean up over here as well. Nothing too fancy, just clean off the worst of it. Then, I like to take copper grease or something similar. And the thing is, not to use too much. 
Just use a tiny bit on the edge here. You don't want to get any on the brake material. So just a little bit along that edge. Spread it out like that. Same on the other edge. And just a little bit where each of these rings are. All right, this pad's ready to go back in. I'm just gonna do the same thing on the other one. Before I put the pads in, I'm just gonna have a quick look at the pistons. I'm not sure how well you can guys see, but the pistons are basically almost all the way in on both sides. They're pushed in pretty far and they're all pushed in the same amount. That's really good. And everything felt really free when I squeezed here with my pliers to push it in. Nothing felt like it was binding. It moved pretty easily. So I don't feel like any pistons are stuck or have any issues. They've all moved pretty easy, evenly. Also, if you have a look at the pads, you see that they're pretty evenly worn. They're about the same thickness, so definitely this caliper is working well. So now we can put the pads back in. And they should hopefully slide in pretty easily. There's one side. And there's the other side. Now that the pads are in, I can put in the pins here. And they just go in the exact same way they came out. And I've cleaned them up so that they will slide hopefully really easily. Make sure that you line up the little hole there so you can put in the locking little circlip. And the last little locking clip. So now all that's back together and it's definitely not going to squeal anymore and everything's going to move really nicely. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side and then let's have a look at the rear brakes. Here are the rear brake calipers. Uh, since I don't really have access to a lift, I'm just under the car right now on the creeper. So if I show you guys what it looks like and then I'll have to remove it on my own because I can't really get a camera up in here and remove things at the same time. But you see here's a close-up of the caliper. You can see the two clips. There's one on the right at the top and there's one on the bottom on the left. So those pull out and those pins push out in the same way. You can push the pistons back in and just pull those brake pads out. So I'm going to pull out those pads right now and then we'll have a look what they look like. Clean them up and put everything back together. So here's everything on the workbench. And I think I found the source of most of the uh, squealing brakes on this car. These pads are completely shot. There's almost nothing left. Thankfully, none of them have gone through to metal. That one's really close. So the disc hasn't been damaged. It's pretty funny because if you look from behind, I mean, they did look worn, but not at all as bad as they are. Uh, these look completely fine. They're straight. They're not bent. Uh, they slid out pretty easily. So same thing as the front. I'm just going to clean them up a bit and put them back. But I'm not going to put these pads back in. However, um, I always save a bunch of Jag parts and I dis disassembled a rear end a few years ago from a car that had that was in an accident just after a major rebuild and I used the brake calipers from my V12 and I already had new uh, pads and discs for that so I put that in but when I took off the parts the pads were pretty much brand new. There's not a lot of miles on these and they're in perfect shape so I kept them in this box here along with a set of pretty much new um, handbrake pads. So I'm gonna put these in. Uh, they are not brand new, but they're in excellent, excellent shape. And if I feel that they don't feel good at all, if they don't seat well, of course I'll replace them completely, but I think these will be just fine. So I will clean these up in the same way that I cleaned the other ones, just on the side here with a brush and the back. So I'll do that to all of them. And I'll take some copper grease, put here on the sides, here on the sides, and a little bit here on the back. Clean these up and then we'll put them all back in and I'll show you what it looks like when it's all back on the car. Now it's all back together back here. I'll put in those pads that we cleaned up on the workbench and put the grease on. Clean everything up here. I pushed each piston all the way in and they all went in nice and smoothly, so no issues back here at all. So now all of these brakes are ready for many more miles. And that's it for this episode, and I actually took the car for a small little test drive off camera just around my house. 
and the brakes feel really good and there's no squeals at all. The pedal is firm and nice, uh, the brakes feel like they take pretty evenly and they're completely quiet. So everything seems to be working really well now. Of course I'll test them out more when I go on a more high speed run and see that the car doesn't pull to the right or left. But I don't think it's going to. Everything seems to work really well. So what's left to do? Not that much now. I do have some things that I need to put back in the engine bay that I've painted, that I painted a bit later, that I still want to cure a little bit more. Then we're going to tune the SU carburetor, so there will be a video on that. And then we're going to go and get it inspected and hopefully it will pass with flying colors. At least that's my hope. I can't see anything really majorly wrong with it, so I really hope it's going to pass. So until next time, I'm Adam and this was Lumwith a Classic. I'll see you soon.